Good morning, how are you? It is such a joy to see so many beautiful women. I'm sure there are a few stray men in here, probably. <laughs> I woke up this morning with my eyes on women. I say woke up this morning with my eyes on women. Woke up this morning with my eyes on women. Woke up this morning with my eyes on women. Gonna live, gonna love, gonna be just like you. Most of you know that I taught for about 40 years in universities. And quite often when it ended, I would go home and get in my bed after grading papers at the end of the semester for about two weeks. And I had done that for about two weeks, and the telephone rang one morning. It was an editor who said, oh, Professor Sanchez, I'm so glad I've caught you. Um, we're waiting for that review that you're going to do for the book. Have you finished it? I said, oh, I said, oh yes, yes, indeed, I did finish it. I, in fact, I mailed it last night. And he said, how, well, good, we're holding space for you. How long is it? I said, it's the length of a regular review and hung up the telephone. Because I had not even read the book. So I got my children together, woke them up, said, get some cereal, we're going to the park. And I took them out to the park, and I got them on their bikes. And I went looking for a place to sit to read a book and, read a and write a review at the same time. And I saw this old, 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 old woman sitting, sitting on the bench. And you know, when you're in the park and you sit next to people, you know, they want to talk. But I had to read and I had to write. And so I crossed in front of her and my look says, not today, not today, not today, not today, my dear sister, another day, another day. I got to read this book. I crossed in front of her and sat with my back towards her. And this is what happened. This is called Just Don't Never Give Up on Love. Feeling tired that day, I came to the park with the children. I saw her as I rounded the corner, sitting old at stale beer on the bench, ruminating on some uneventful past, and I thought, hell no rap from the roots today. I need the present. On this day, this Monday, this July day, buckling me under her summer wings, I need more than old words for my body to squeeze in two. I sat down at the far end of the bench, draping my legs over the edge, burying my back to time and time unwell spent. I screamed to the children to watch those curves threatening their youth as they rode their 10-speed bikes against Midwestern rhythms. I opened my book and began to write. They were coming again, those words insistent as his hands had been pounding inside me, demanding their time and place. I relaxed as my hands moved across the paper like one possessed. I wasn't sure just what it was I heard. At first, I thought it was one of the boys calling me, so I kept on writing. They knew the routine by now. Emergencies demanded a presence, a facial confrontation. No long distance screams across trees and space and other children's screams. But the sound pierced the pages, and I looked around. And there she was, inching her bamboo crease body towards my back, coughing a beaded sentence off her tongue. Gish. You think I ain't never love, hung huh, girl? <laughs> Guess that's what you be thinking, huh? I turned, startled by her closeness and propriety. I stuttered, I, I, what do you mean? <laughs> Guess you think I've been old like this forever, huh? She leaned towards me, huh? I was so pretty that men's brought me breakfast in bed. Wouldn't let me hardly do no work at all. That's nice, ma'am. I'm glad to hear that. I returned to my book. I didn't want to hear about some ancient love that she carried inside her. I had to finish a review for the journal. I was already late. I hoped she would get the hint and just sit still. I looked at her out of the corner of my eyes. He could barely keep himself in changing clothes, but he was pretty. My first husband looked like the sun. I used to say his name over and over again till it hung from my ears like diamonds. Has you ever loved a pretty man, girl? I raised my eyes, determined to keep a distance from this woman disturbing my day. No, ma'am, but I've seen many a pretty man. I don't like them, though, cause they keep their love up high in a linen closet and I'm too short to reach it. 
Her skin shook with laughter. Girl, you got some spunk about you after all. Come on over here next to me. I want to see your eyes up close. You look so uneven sitting over there. Did she say uneven? Did this old Buddha splintering death say uneven? Couldn't she see that I had one eye shorter than the other, that my breast was painted on porcelain, that one breast crocheted keloids under this white blouse? I moved towards her though. I scooped up the years that had stripped me to the waist and moved towards her. And she called to me to come out, come out wherever you are, young woman, playing hide and go seek with scarecrow men. I gathered myself up at the gateway of her confessionals. Do you know what it means to love a pretty man, girl? She crooned in my ear. You're always running behind a man like that girl while he cradles his privates. Ain't no joy in a pretty yellow man, cause you always are pleasuring and giving pleasure. I nodded my head as her words sailed in my ears. Here was the pulse of a woman whose black eyes shook the world once. She continued, a woman crying all the time. It's pitiful, pitiful, I says. I was pitiful sitting by the window every night like a cow in the fields chewing on cud. I wanted to cry out, but not even God himself could hear me. I tried to cry out till my mouth was split open at the throat. I suppose there is a time all women's has to visit the slaughterhouse. My visit lasted five years. Touching her hands, I felt the summer splintering in prayer. Touching her hands, I felt my bones migrating in red noise. I asked, when did you see the butterflies again, ma'am? Her eyes wandered like quicksand over my face. Then she smiled, girl, don't you know yet that you don't never give up on love? Don't you know you has in you the pulse of winds, the noise of dragonflies? Her eyes went to close and she said, one of the mornings he woke up calling me and I was gone. I was gone running with the moon over my shoulders, looked no which way at all, had inside me enough knives and spoons to cut, scoop out the night. I was a trembling as I met the morning. She stirred in her 84 year old memory. She stirred up her body as she talked these men and men, some good, some bad, some breathing death, some breathing life. William was my beginning. I come to my second husband spitting metal and he just picked me up fold me inside him. I was christened with his love. She began to hum. I didn't recognize the song. It was a prayer. I leaned back and listened to her voice rustling like silk. I heard cathedrals and sonnets. I heard tents and revivals and a black woman spilling black juice among her ruins. We all got to salute death one time, another girl. Death be waiting our doors trying to get inside. William died at his job. Death just turned around, snatched him right off the street. Her humming became the only sound in the park. Her voice moved across the bench like a mutilated child, and I cried for myself, for this woman talking about love, for all the women who have ever stretched their bodies out anticipating civilization and finding ruins. The crashing of the bikes was anticlimactic. I jumped up, rushed towards the accident. Man, little man, where you bicycling to so very fast? Man, second little man, take it slow. It all passes so fast anyhow. As I walked the boys and their bikes towards the bench, I smiled at this old woman waiting for our return. I want you to meet a great lady, boys. Is she a writer to Ma? No, honey. She's a lady who has lived life instead of writing about it. After we say hello, can we ride a little while longer, please? Okay, but watch your manners now and your bones afterwards. These are my sons, ma'am. How you do, sons? I'm Miss Rosalie Johnson, glad to meet you. The boys shook her hand, listened for a minute to her words. Then they rode off, spinning their wheels on a city neutral with pain. As I stood watching the race the morning, Miss Johnson got up, don't go, I cried. You didn't finish your story. We talk by and by, comes out here almost every day, sits here on the same bench every day, probably dies sitting here one day, as good a place as any, I imagine. May I hug you, ma'am? You've helped me so much today. You've given me the strength to keep on looking. No, don't never go looking for love, girl, just wait. It'll come like the rain falling from the heaven. It'll come. Just don't never give up on love. We hug. Then she walked, her 84-year-old walk down the street, a black woman echoing go. 
carrying couplets from the sky to crease the ground. So just don't you never give up on love, my dear sisters, or on yourselves, your vision of yourselves. Never stop loving yourselves, even when you're alone. Always be willing to listen to elders who have walked a long walk on this earth, a long walk of history and history. And be mindful of you. Know that you walk in the light that is woman. You walk in the light that is woman, that is woman, that is woman. So I'm asking you all to put on the sleeves of love for yourself. Put on the hands of love for yourself. Put on the fingerprints of love for yourself. Put on the waist of love for yourself and the legs of love for yourself and the eyes of love for yourself and the toe jam of love for yourself and the teeth of love for yourself and walk. I say walk. I say walk, walk, walk in the light that is woman. Walk in the light that is you. Thank you.